are appropriate to press when beginning a show. Ready? Let's do it. All right. Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. <laughs> Soothing sounds of aeroplanes and pianos. This is the podcast that is called Couch Pilots. It is the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. Hello, my name is Jason. People also call me the Bottle Cap Kid. I am sitting across from the brains, the guts, the intelligence, the uh, the producer, the... Good Good looking, the um, sexy, sexy, the, the um, well endowed, problematically well endowed, some may say. Well fed. Well, what? Well fed. Well fed. <laughs> well fed. <laughs> well fed. It speaks to his pants size. It is my friend uh, and and my part time lover, Blake Clayton. You can call him the podcasting god if you want to. I know I would. Blake, how are you? I'm doing splendid, man. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you again on the on the the tarp. Is that what they call it? Tarmac. The tarmac. And, no, that uh, sounds like an early 70s computer program, doesn't it? Right. That's a game we used to play, Tarmac. Pull up the Tarmac! But, <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's a little chilly out tonight. Uh, there's some ice in our future, but I think I think this flight's going to it's gonna go as well as it can go. It's always a smooth flight with us. Oh, and, 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 the, the flight is not the problem. It's the landing and the taking off right. that people get scared about. I, when, I think once you're up in the air with us, yeah. it's the best thing in the world. You're going to have a hell of a time, I guarantee but, it. But... Getting up and getting down sometimes kind of makes people uneasy. There's no one else in my life that I know that likes to get down more than our guest today. And when I mean get down, I mean dance. He's a dance machine. God bless him. I, I've, I may be older than him by nine years. He may be my baby brother. But he's taught me so much about the act of body movement and, and how to dance. Um, sitting in with us today... And again, I introduce myself, I introduce you, people think that's it. That's not it. We have more. There is more there's, to this show. There's always more. My brother's here. His name You're, is Kevin. I love him. Kevin, your brother. Hi, Kevin, the brother. Hello. I am that person. The dancing machine? The dancing machine. I am. Um, now, I don't want people to get confused. Kevin does not have any frequent flyer miles. He does not. This Kevin, is nepotism. Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> you said nepotism. Kevin is here. Kepitism. Strictly because it's bring your brother to work day. It is. And uh, me, sorry, I'm burping. That's that's fine. Go ahead. Ugh. So you know he's your little brother. Bring your brother to work day. You said this. This is what I do. This is this is who I am. This, this is, is what I'm I about. Am. This is what I do. Um, he he's always tugging at my apron. Jason, Jason, what do you do when when you disappear on Monday nights for hours at a time? What do you do, buddy? What do you do? I say, you know what? Come with me. You come with me. You get in the car. I'll put you in your car seat. I'll buckle you in. I'm going to drive you safely down to uh, the IBWIP FCF Network Studios, and you're going to sit on a show with us. But first, you're going to have to watch the awful trash that we watch <laughs> right, so that you right, can talk right, about right. it. <laughs> right. It sounds all fun. You, 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 it was sounding like the greatest night of your life until that last part, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> he was Correct. so excited. Um, and, and, then, and again, to speak to the fact that he, he is not a frequent flyer but is here because of nepotism – Kevin, how many episodes of Pouch, uh, Couch Pilots? I keep wanting to say Pouch Pilots. That's a different show. Yeah. Uh, how many episodes have you listened to? One. Which one? Zero? Say zero. <laughs> zero. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we had our... our well, my, some of this language is not... I mean, he's your little brother. I mean, some of the things we talk about are really not necessarily it, for, for, for children's ears. When I look, at, when I look it up on iTunes. It's got that little red E before explicit. Yes, that's a big thing with Libsyn. You, you have you have to. It's either explicit or not. There's no in between anymore. Right. It's no PG thirteen. No. Nope. This is a hard R or this is a Disney uh, romp. Right. A singing in the rain, G rated, all smiles and and so uh, coat suits. Is that a thing? Soup coats. Soup. Soup coats. Delicious chowder. Um. I'm very happy to have Kevin here today. He he listen he does listen to IBWIP on occasion. Sure. So he he enjoys that. 
Um, well, you something. really shouldn't be listening to that. This is tame compared to that. <laughs> oh, is it? You learn, you've learned everything about life pretty much from IBWP, right? Part of it. Part. <laughs> which part? The which part of life did you learn about the most? Not. About dead space? Yes. About dead hair? <laughs> see, the, see this little screen over here? When there's nothing, <laughs> that's bad. No. Well, no uh, pressure. <laughs> it, it was pretty much on a whim. I said, I'm going to watch this shit. Do, do you, you want to watch it with me and go? And he's like, yeah, I'll go. So here he is. All right. Well, we're glad to have you. Um, there's not. Don't be running back and forth on the plane. Okay. You, you know, disrupt the other passengers. So. Yeah, have a seat. Relax. Enjoy the flight. Is there dancing allowed? Um, there may be, there may be a time with this episode, yeah. there may be a time for that. Any other questions before we start? Any comments? Any, any delicious clementines? I believe not. I'll, uh, throw some your way if I have any. Feel free, anytime. Will do. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. Okay, here, here's what I think. When our time is up in life, that's it. The clock is ticking, and and we choose to spend this precious time watching garbage television pilots for your pleasure. Right. That's what I think. Networks create programs and show them to America's finest test audiences and decide which ones make it to air. The ones uh, we watch never made it to air or only got one episode because it's Crap Town USA. So, so check out these bad boys, and we break them down for you bit by bit, review by review, interesting fact by arguably interesting fact. Sure, and and – it's not for us to decide if the facts are interesting. And we'll, and we'll get into that later. That's sure. fine. But yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. We want to watch these shows because of the amount of spare time we have on our hands. And then we may as well record it for prosperity. Sure. And I, I think it's a, it's a good way to bond with people from all over the world. That's right. I mean, we've had people from Belgium listen. We've had people from Yugoslavia listen. And um, I think it's, just, it's our way of... Banning people together to, to make this world a better place. We should note that until we, I win Powerball, then fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> One point dollars. Um, I, I should say I should preface almost everything that we do by saying we are very huge in, in Eastern Europe, specifically Yugoslavia. Sure, sure. Uh, we could walk over there and just write our own ticket. Essentially, I mean, you want to talk about Powerball here in the United States? That's one thing. Uh, this show is our Powerball ticket in Yugoslavia. Sure, yeah, and. Um, you know it, the the language barrier. It doesn't matter. I mean, no. they hear our voices. Um, I have do have some fan feedback. Oh, do you know? Uh, yes, I, I got a text message earlier um, uh, from a, a young lady. I'd love to hear what this is. Sure, and how, um, and how she got your number. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, it said I listened to the last one. Jason has a hell of a radio voice. Can I ask who that is? Uh, that's Jim Flo. Oh, Jen Flo. Yeah. Now, Jen Flo, I will ask, how is she? She's single and ready to mingle. Question answered. Yep. Um, what show... And to be honest with you, if you just don't look at her feet... Does she got a foot problem? Oh, they're, they're, they're rather large. Are they fungal? No, no, no. I don't think they're Full fungal. Full of fungus? No, they're just, they're, they just take up a lot of property. Kevin, um, do you know what they say about girls who have big feet? They also have uh, big socks? Nope. What is it, Blake? Um, well, again, fact. You know, we. This is a fact, right? You're about you're about to dispel a fact right. on us, and you decide at home whether right. it's interesting. Or not. Um, their clitoris is fat. Oh, jeez, that would make sense. And you know what? That's honestly, you might think, oh, uh, it's everyone sees the feet. It's a physical part of the woman. Um, it's unappealing to have big feet. But honestly, for the guy in the boudoir to have a giant clitoris is very beneficial. Yeah, to him. You, I mean, it's one of those. The bigger the foot, the, the easier. I mean, you don't miss. Right. You're like Tony, you're like Tony Gwynn. Like Tony Gwynn. The, uh, I assume he's a baseball player? Yeah. He was one of the best hitters ever. Yeah. <laughs> he would knock that clitoris out of the park. <laughs> uh, he wasn't really a power hitter. He would hit for average. But he would at least make the woman orgasm. Oh, definitely. Because <laughs> he was black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, black, black men have, are, uh, are apt to do that. Um, so black men giving women... With giant clitoris's orgasms really bleeds pretty well into the show that we watched today. <laughs> this, into this cartoon. <laughs> into this Saturday morning children's cartoon. Um, today's program is Mini Monsters from October 27, 1973. And it has the, the distinction, like Blake said earlier, of being, or actually maybe on the previous show is what Blake said, of being the very first cartoon yep. and perhaps the only cartoon that we watch. I don't know yet. We don't know. That's a fact that we don't know. 1973. Great year. Yep, I was negative two. You're negative two. Um, 
Kevin, how old were you in 1973? Well, that's a good question. I think I was about negative thir- 17. 17. 17. Yeah. Negative yeah. 17. Negative 17. You hold the record now. Oh, and I, I will Holy say this. shit. Yeah, if we're keeping track, which we have, all of our frequent flyers are keeping sure. track. Not well, only do they keep a track of what show we watch and when and the rating system, and they rate themselves, they also keep track of how old we are in terms of the show, as well as our guest hosts. Definitely. Um, do you want me to put Kevin into the frequent flyer system? I can punch him in there and get him in there. Why don't you give him a few bonus points? Okay. Yeah, just for being here today. Yep, there's all the sounds that you hear on a keyboard. That would be lovely. To confirm. What's your last name? It is a... Uh... Rest assured. <laughs> no, he's not a rest assured. I can tell by... <laughs> rest assured. He's I, not I a rest assured. I can tell by his hairline. It's too, too sure. <laughs> too sure. Um, all right. We'll get, I'm going to go ahead and give you 10000 to start off with. Mini Monsters, October 27, 1973. Um, it's impressive that you were negative 17, Kevin, when that came out. Perhaps more impressive is that October 27th is my birthday, so I was to the day eight years, negative eight years. Wow. Old, that I was born October 27th. So uh, it makes sense because when I say Mini Monsters, there's no um, ambiguity there. We're talking about the shitty television sitcom from the 60s called The Monsters. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. A house full of <laughs> <bad monsters. laughs> How's that? Uh, I, who are you trying to be? <laughs> who is that? That's that? Eddie Monster. Or, no, I mean, not Eddie, but Herman. Was it Herman? <laughs> <laughs> I, that show, I hate that show. Yeah. That show sucks. I'm sorry I don't get your reference. I'm sure it is spot on. Okay. I'll look into it afterwards. Right. I, you know what? I'm going to give you some frequent flyer points for that. Right, thanks. <laughs> um... But yeah, I was. It's appropriate that it aired when it did, because it's right about Christmas or right about Halloween, rather my favorite holiday. And you have a house full of monsters uh, and kids. Halloween, scary, spooky. It, it all makes sense. It's a, it's a recipe for success. Was it successful? Obviously not. We're talking about it. Um, beyond that, though, oh, here's a, here's a clip of Eddie or Herman Munster. Oh, hold on. This is Blake proving the point that his impression was spot on. Oh. It didn't. It, it didn't. Uh, <laughs> I thought I, I I YouTubed Herman Monster laugh. Yeah, and what did you get? I got him whistling, which sounded like a tugboat. So okay, virtually the same. I'll thing. put it in post. Um, it's cartoon kids Halloween. Like I said, coming off of a not really successful series. I think the monsters probably lasted for like two or three seasons mm-hmm. and made probably like 500 episodes sure, because every yeah. season was like 30 episodes. Back. It was crazy. Um, but, but a franchise that people were familiar with. So sure. again, it seemed like successful. It seemed successful, but it wasn't, but there are reasons that we chose the mini monsters. Uh, Blake, I think, you know, probably better than anyone else. Why did we choose this show? Well, there's three criteria that we use. Let's count them down from one. Okay, one, mm-hmm. um, it failed. It, w- it did not go to series. It failed. Okay, zero. Okay, um, okay. Uh, it was free. And negative one. And we found it. Yeah, that's it. Yep. That's literally all it takes for us to watch a show. So, you know, fans that are listening know we're getting ready to do the 80s here pretty soon. In a couple episodes, we're going to start doing the 80s. Get your emails now. Get yeah. your emails in right now because... It's only those three criteria. We tape these a little bit in advance. Sure. There is a window for you to jump mm-hmm. in and give us your thoughts, your feedback, Definitely. your suggestions for shows we should watch and talk about. And even if we don't catch them in the decade for the quote-unquote season of our shows that we're doing, once we're done, we're probably going to uh, wrap back around and catch other things that we missed. Sure. And that could be part of what you're sending us. Definitely. So just because you find something from the 1970s and we haven't talked about it yet – doesn't mean that we won't get to it or we won't talk about it. And we'll put you in the system and with extra frequent flyer miles for, right. for um, giving us feedback and helping us out. So the fact that this is free and, and, and available to be watched is one of the criteria for us choosing it. Kevin, let me ask you this. Before you saw it, how much would you be willing to pay to watch the Mini Monsters? Uh, back in the day or uh, now? Right, today. Today? Like if, knowing nothing about it, knowing nothing about Couch Pilots or Pouch Pilots, um, if you knew there was a show out there called The Mini Monsters, how much would you pay to watch it? I'd probably pay a good uh, dollar and a quarter. Dollar and a quarter. Now, you've already seen it. Knowing that you've watched it, how much would you pay to see it again? I think they would have to pay me a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's about right. <laughs> a, 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 ch- a chilling vision of things to come. Uh, where can you find The Mini Monsters? Uh, you'll find it. <laughs> you'll be glad you did. Click on a blue link. 
Blue link. Click on it, just any random blue link. It'll, it'll be there. Or go to YouTube. That's where we find most of this stuff. Type in the Mini Monsters. It'll be on YouTube. Click on the link in our show notes for that and so much other great content. Um, and you, too, can spend an amount of time of your life doing the thing that we did. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. That's your brother. I, I, mean, know, I can hear him. I okay. made that. I sit, made that noise. Kevin, sit down. Sit down. This is dangerous. Sit down. We're taking off. We don't need you. We have a perfect flight record. Oh, boy. Just trying to do the hammer dance. Uh-oh. 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 Take There's off. A hammer. Summary of the pilot. Um, someone wrote a really detailed, like, as many sentences here, I think they probably talk about it. Like, they give every detail, practically. Um, the cartoon begins when some gangsters are asking directions to an oil refinery after Herman gives them directions, the gasoline. I'm not going to talk about right. this. That's too much. They, they really do give it all away, and we're about to do that. Sure. We don't want, we don't want to <laughs> use someone else's. We don't want to give them our job. Right. I have to put bread on the table at home. Right. And, and you know, by you reading all that, that's a lot of facts for our listeners to take in. And um, although we pride ourselves on our facts, yeah. I, I think that would be overloading them on facts. There's, there's a summary which is, in this case, very extensive in and, and this part of the show. And then there's also interesting facts. And, again, you know, it's – we present facts because they're the truth, and you deserve to know the truth. We're in a society where we're constantly being put in the corner, having the light taken away from us. We're, we don't know what's going on. We're here to shine some of that light on, on the truth so people know what's happening. Shine down, brother. Now, are they interesting? Maybe. It, d- Maybe. Don't – Jason, don't do it. They might be. Jason – don't do it. You know the rules of couch pilots. I, in we, my head, I know whether or not they're interesting. I'm not going to say it because that's for people to decide. The right. frequent flyers. We give the information. We give the facts. It's up to the listeners to decide if they're interesting, if they're uh, made up. Again, well endowed. Well endowed. Um, what race they are. What creed right. they are. Yeah. You know. That's right. Well, arm, hey, with us, facts, arms wide open. Right. We'll take them all. We'll take all comers. Um, here, here's a fact for you. Get ready Get ready on your scale, your uh, FCF scale, your couch pilot scale of what is and isn't interesting to write this one down. Um, writers of the Mini Monsters, Arthur Alsberg and Don Nelson, went on after this to pen the script for The Monster's Revenge in 1981. Hmm. 1981. Yeah. So this came – when did I say this came out? Uh, uh, 73. 73, that's exactly right. So uh, another eight years. I think the original airing of The Monsters was in the late 60s. Mm. Is that fair to say? Uh, yeah, yeah, right around there. Yeah. Did you ever watch The Monsters, Kevin? I've seen a couple episodes. What did you see? Like a Nick at Night? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I would say it was a, more of a later at night. It sucks, right? Yeah, it was It was bad. It's There was nothing good to say about it, yeah. in my opinion. Two or three seasons tops, I think. 1964. 64. 1964. So almost 10 years and this will play right into what's wrong with this series, and we get into that later too. But um, I just I can't imagine going from '64 and then having a, a show called The Monsters' Revenge. I think it was a made-for-TV movie in 1981. I can't imagine that crap show having that kind of lifespan. You know what I mean? Yeah. I and, and, and the people that watched the show in the '60s, yeah, they're not going to be watching a cartoon in the '70s. That's right. Or That's exactly they're not going right. to be watching a reboot movie. In the 80s. Oh, my God. I've got so much to say about this. Um, the Mini Monsters was an animated... Now, this is interesting, too. The one that we watched, it was about 22, 23 minutes, mm-hmm. which I don't think I could stand much more than that. The Mini Monsters was an animated one-hour telefilm that was in, uh, aired as part of the a- ABC Saturday Superstar movie in 1973, and it was based on the characters from The Monsters. This is, I read this a couple spots, that this was originally an hour program. The movie made, or the uh, cartoon, as it relates to how kids would watch it, made just enough sense to me to where it's like, oh, this, there's no more than this. Right. There are confusing parts to to it suggest maybe it was chopped up a little bit, but overall, I feel like if someone presented this to me and said this is the whole show, I'd be like, okay, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that's fine, I okay. get it. Yeah. But apparently, there's an hour version out there. I, I found a couple blue links to shows that were 22 minutes just like this, but none that were an hour. Hmm. Thank God. Hmm. Yeah. So it. That we can't review that because that didn't meet a requirement. Yeah, which we could, one? We couldn't, which couldn't one? find it. We could find it right. Um, Al Lewis, Grandpa, is the only actor to reprise his role. Yep. 
uh, in, in the cartoon. So. And, and I wrote that down. I wrote Grandpa's voice, same as. Yep. And you know what? It's Not funny save too. as. What's that? Not save as. Save as, like an Excel? No, oh, yeah, same as. Um, the sequel to the wildly popular Gremlins film. And I would say it probably came out in like 89, 91, somewhere in there. And you remember Gremlins? A long time ago. You remember Gremlins 2, the, the second batch or no. the next batch? Uh-uh. This is the movie where they got crazy with the Gremlins. I think the main guy and the girl both were in this big, big huge television building. They made a lot of TV shows. And they did research. It was kind of a company. I don't know what they did. But somehow the Gremlins got in there or someone brought the Mogwai in and he got wet. And all these different Gremlins took on different odd traits and personalities and different powers and stuff. So it was a really kind of it made each one interesting. Mm-hmm. And in this building where they were doing tests and uh, had different TV show stuff, you had Al Lewis dressed up as his character from the monsters, kind of, kind of like what Shannon does. He, he would review or host movies. Sure. From SN, Shannon from SNM radio. Sure. So it's funny that this is kind of the character throughout Al's or Al Lewis's life that he was most recognized with. Yeah, um, looking on here on his IMDb, it's it's monsters and car fifty four. Where are you? Which was he the voice of the car? Uh, no, he was one. Of the, I think he was one of the cops. Did the car have a voice? Am yes. I thinking of a different show. Okay, was he a cop car or just a cop? No, he was a cop. Okay. So and they shoot horses, don't they? Was another one. That's what he's best known for. Huh. But, Sh- but mainly the monsters, right? Yeah, it was. It, it, that's the character that you know. He's known for his voice is recognizable. Kevin, I feel like you really wanted to say something about shooting horses. He was known for shooting horses. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> In real life? All the above. He's asking. Uh, I'm asking you. He was a great uh, proprietor of glue. He was in... You want to hear some more? Uh, uh, facts about Al Lewis? Yeah. Just like 10 or 11 more, but make them okay. interesting. <laughs> so, The Monsters. Yeah. Uh, Night Terror, which was a movie in 2002. Uh, Fast Money. Um, he was in South Beach Academy. Uh, he played Uncle Gene, uh, but he was on Here Here Come the Monsters in 1995, the TV movie. Wow, I do not remember that. Car 54. My grandpa is a vampire. Perfect role for him. Right. Uh, Hi, honey, I'm home. Fr- I remember that show. Bright House. Grandpa's more silly scaries, which is same stuff. Yeah. Um, grandpa's presence. He, uh, Grandpa's monster movies. Bob Denver as Gilligan. Every time you saw him, yep. he, he'd be in that red shirt and that dopey white hat, and he was forever pigeonholed as that character. It sounds like uh, Al Lewis kind of made a career, hopefully, hopefully, happily so too, in in that in kind of being different versions of that character sure. throughout different films and TV projects. The Monsters' Revenge in 1981. That's what. Yep, that's the one we mentioned here. Here comes Coons- the he was in Coonskin. Coonskin. Uh oh, it was a cartoon. Yeah, edit that one out. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a there's just a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. Well, let's get into talk. Actually, you know what? Let's take should we take a quick break? Let's take a quick break. Yeah, let's get it out of the way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's I didn't mean it that way. That's fine. Um here here's a show uh that you've probably heard of before. Uh it's part of the FCF network, and if not, you're gonna hear about it right now. For over eight years, Blake Clayton, the podcasting god, has brought you the best in roots music, adult comedy, and real talk with his ever-revolving cast of co-hosts in the form of It Burns When I Pee. Join one of the true podcast originators along with intern Heather and the Bottle Cap Kid as they play games, interview interesting characters, and just maybe uncover the meaning of life. New episodes of IBWIP can be found every Friday on the Fakakta Comedy Network. Check us out at fcfnetwork.com and join in on the fun. I like that show. I appreciate you playing that. I know you're in, you're in control of all the the bells and whistles for this show, and, okay. and I appreciate you pushing that button and making that promo um, heard to the masses. You've had a lot of uh, you've had your hands in a lot of different things. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that is your baby. Yeah, it's it's definitely my baby. That is where everything started, and probably where everything will end. Well, you know, and to me, it, it, it's also kind of that that baby. You know, it's it's my baby, so it's like my firstborn. So like. When it was starting out, it was little and cute, and it was fun. And, yeah. and then, you know, oh, no. as it got older, you know, you could play with it more, and you could talk to it and have conversations with it, which made it interesting. Yeah. And now it's just like a, it's a mouthy teenager now. <laughs> it's just a mouthy fucking teenager. You just want to slap the shit out of it. That's how I – that's 
in in my mind, that's how I think that you think of the show. So I think. <laughs> <laughs> So is it worth checking out? Uh, I don't know. Oh no, it's it's good. Oh, okay. I didn't okay. say it wasn't good. It's... Okay. It's become a burden. <laughs> well, you're doing three shows now. Well, what do you what do you have time to please your wife? <laughs> she doesn't want to be pleased. Um, doing three shows. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing three shows. You're doing and the then... song. You're doing couch pilots. You're doing IBWIP. You're executive, executive producing producer. all the other shows. Yeah, yeah you're you, you're a busy boy. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you made time to watch this piece of trash. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, so let's just get right into it. There's no theme song. I think the trailer we had for this, or the commer- it was a commercial from the from the 1970s ABC Saturday morning film cartoon fest, whatever the hell it was. Um, so it starts. It goes right into it. We uh, we pan on the street of 1313 uh, Mockingbird Lane, which is their famous address. It's it's raining, oh, just, but only on their house. Yep, just over their house. A bat flies in the window, mm-hmm. and it's I, I I couldn't get what they were saying. Some of the audio was uh, yeah. The, the audio on this is a little rough. Um, if you do want to watch it, it, it it will soon dissipate. Not in the sound, won't, but your brain will start to block it out. It'll start to assimilate or right. Like, so so just <laughs> just to it. sit through it for a couple minutes. It's going to hiss and it's going to yeah. be a high squeal. But hey, we did it. We, we did, did it. it for you. We did it. We did it. We're dummies. You could sure, surely you can do it. Um, okay, so a bat comes in. It's uh, it's and he's got the it's got monster stock report or it's like does it have like the stocks yeah. around its leg? He pulls he pulls a p- little piece of paper off of the bat's leg like it's a scroll, <laughs> and he starts reading stock numbers and then a message. Is that right, Kevin? Correct. And he also ha- he was using a magnifying glass to uh, yeah. okay. read all this. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't he know the guy too? Didn't he know? And he was wearing like one of those like metal round Nazi helmets or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like uh, with the, with a little uh, cross on the top of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like uh, from uh, uh, what was that sh- sh- the German military show? Um, uh, the guy Hogan's with, Heroes? Yeah. It was the, the big heavy set guy, the okay. guard. He wore that hat all the time. Oh boy, um, and, and the what, what does it say? It says something about like some nephews or some or some relatives coming to town. Yep, the the yes. the, the uh, cousins or something. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yes, the cousins, and then um, and then twin cousins. And then what do we got here? Knock on the door. Who's there? Heaven. Heaven. I wish. I wish we were knocking on heaven's door, but it was someone else. Kevin, who knocks on the door? It was the cousins themselves. No, no, that's not right. <laughs> Did you watch this? <laughs> you fucking. Really we were tired. <laughs> I, uh, what time is it? <laughs> well, who's knocking on the door, Blake? I don't know. It's a mobster. Oh. The well, guy knocks right. on the door and he says, hey, I'm looking for an oil refinery. Yeah. Do you know where it is? For, for, looking for an oil refinery. <laughs> I'm playing the ripoff of Marlon Brando. Yeah. Yeah. What can forget, I do for you? Forget about it. I just need an oil, oil refinery. <laughs> on this, the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> What's my next line? <laughs> What's my next line? Uh, okay, so Grandpa says, "Hey, I'll tell you how to get there." And he says, "I'm really." He says, "Like a, you take your coffin down this way. Right. It's, it's a, it's a knife throw to the. F- it's just using very bizarre language. You know, this is for kids." Yeah, and instantly, um, you're they, they have the classic laugh track. Just um, there's a oh there's God. a guy with Tourette's pushing that button <laughs> over and over, even when it's not even really appropriate at all. He's just pushing this laugh track because kids are going to laugh if you're laughing. You know what I mean? I oh, yes. and I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again later. I not a Hanna Barbera fan. I think they suck. No Scooby Doo, no Grape Ape, none of that shit. Great Ape, Great Ape. Those they're more punchlines to me than anything else. They're, sure. they're pieces of Americana that are silly to poke at, but they suck. And you know why? Because there's no live studio audience. And yeah. Warner Brothers is smart. They say we know that we're gonna let our jokes be funny on the merit of their creativity mm-hmm. and their intelligence. We don't need to tell you when to laugh, dummy. Right. Here's Bugs Bunny putting his finger in the end of Elmer Fudd's shotgun, and then he gets black powder all over his face. Right. These shows put in laugh tracks, and they're awful. It's so stupid. It treats you like an idiot because you're like, oh, are they, is someone drawing this real time in front of a group of people and right. they're laughing at it? No. That's and, silly. And then um, you know, you'll also meet Eddie, and like um, the difference between – you know. The original show, Eddie was a little kid, yeah. and here he's a teenager. Enough time has passed, yeah. Yeah, and he's the Ringo Starr wannabe on this show. Oh, why do you say that? Oh, he's in his room playing the drums, and oh, he's, okay. he's scat-bap-bap, you know, just yeah. very Ringo Starr-ish, I thought. 
and I, it's amazing he can do that with all the cobwebs around. Oh yeah, like <laughs> what does the what does the mother do all day long? Just okay, the house combs is her hair. filled filled with cobwebs, and so much so that she is uh, knitting with them. Yeah. She's knitting with cobwebs. I would think the DCFS would come and and take him out of there. Oh yeah, Eddie would be taking. If, if DCF got wind of this, that kid would be out of the house. Look at he split. Kevin, uh, I know you don't like spiders very much. Mm-hmm. I don't care for them one bit. What do you do? You like their spider webs? Do I like their spider webs? Yeah. In person or in the in the in, in person? Like, how, would you? Are you? I know you don't like spiders, but what about spider webs? Uh, I actually find them quite useful. Oh, what do you do with them? Uh, it's actually a survival thing. If you cut yourself, you actually wrap your finger with I did not know that. spider webs. Is that right? It, it's true. There's healing properties in spider webs. There is. I had no idea. I feel like this is uh, this is true. This is true. He's he's given a fact. It's not for that, us. That's to say a fact. It's true I'm, or not. I'm giving people what they want to hear. I'm, I'm going to kind of step outside the realm of what we usually do and say that personally, I find that fact you, it. You can't do it, Jason. It's against everything we stand for. I, I know. It's just like I like that. I like that. I know that now, and I find it kind of. In- and, and and we're passing it along to – that's the satisfaction you need to get. The satisfaction is of us giving facts to our listeners. That's all you need. You, whether you feel it's true or not true, don't don't say it. It you is just, true. It's a fact. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> and I think we're going to get our pilot's license taken away now. I, don't, I won't say whether I think it's interesting or not, but I think everyone at home should listen to what Kevin had to say about the healing properties of spider webs and then decide for themselves whether it's interesting or not. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't, just all right. All right. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. All right. Take a deep breath. All right. <laughs> that's that's three. Is, is it the turbines? <laughs> Kevin, thank you for the fact. Thank, um, okay. Off to the airport. You're gonna pick up Igor. Uh, what was her name Lucretia? Lucretia. I, I I didn't. That's I so. the that, second one. The second one, Lucretia. They're they're twin cousins from Transylvania, right? Yep. Um. And uh, they get to the airport, and they're 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 sitting on the the conveyor belt for the. They come through with the luggage, yeah, <laughs> and they have guitars in their hand it, because they're about ready to form a rock band with Eddie. Boom! Oh yes, rock band with Eddie. Eddie's drumming. These kids got what, one's got a guitar, and the other one's singing. Is that what's happening? They both or? have guitars. Okay, yeah. and you know, and at first Eddie was like, uh, "I don't want to bother with my cousins. I don't want to take. You know, I don't want to have to. They're a burden. They're a burden to me because I'm a hip young cat, so they say. Yeah. Uh, he sees they have guitars, and he's like, "You guys kick ass. I like this. I like that you all have guitars and I have drums. Right. Let's make something happen." And then the music infused episode. Comes oh, to life. Take, yeah, it takes flight. So you know, pun intended. I will not apologize for it. Um, cut to the mobsters. They have taken over that local refinery, and now they're shaking down local business people to use only their product. Yeah, and that was quick. Was super. The quick. mob mob works fast in cartoons. I think when the mobsters got the directions from Grandpa in the beginning, went back to their car. They had a tied up dude in the back seat. Oh yeah, and they had some souped up like. Hot Funny car, car yeah. thing. Yeah, it was definitely goofy looking. What yeah. kind of car was that, Kevin? You're the car guy. I don't know. It's like kind of like a gremlin looking car. I'm not. Yeah, okay. Big, huge blow pi- blower pipes on the sides. Yeah, just big old exhaust side pipes. Yeah. Side pipes. That's what they are. He knows his stuff. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. You can't drive, and you know all this stuff about cars. I know. The uh, the tied up guy. He makes like another appearance or two. He's always tied up. I don't know what they ever did with that guy, but. Through the course of the show, it seems like he may have been tied up for a few months. <laughs> <laughs> um, the kids then uh, they go buy a hearse. Yeah, they they they're rocking out yeah. in the house, and you know they obviously they're really, really loud. Yeah, and so Herman says, and he's like, "Dad, you said you were gonna give me a car. You know, there's there's we can go practice at the school." Yeah. Um. So Herman's like, "You know what? I did promise you that, son. Let's go buy you a car." <laughs> So they buy it, and it's a hearse, mm-hmm. appropriately enough. And Jeremiah Grundy, the former empl- uh, f- former owner, appears as a ghost. Um, and also, the car is powered by music, apparently. Yes, because uh, uh, one of the things we missed talking about was Grandpa was inventing, had invented a, a monster music maker, which okay. is what made cars run. I missed some of this stuff. And, and he made it on accident, didn't he? Yeah, he made it on accident. He was making something and it blew up like it always does in the, on the television show. Everything <laughs> Grandpa did, all his inventions oh, blew Grandpa. up. And all. But 
Yeah, and I, we'll, we're going to come back to this point. And, Jesus Christ. Thirsty? I'm wow. trying to get rid of this beer. It's terrible. Jesus. I've never seen you chuck like that. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, so all now, just quickly, as you blink your eyes, all cars are now powered by music. The faster they play, right. the faster they were, they, The cars slow down, I think almost hit a tree or something. And then, like, it, what happened? Are we out of gas? Well, we're out of gas. We, we, only, we only drove like a mile and a half. It's like we better start jamming in the back seat for no reason. And then the car starts going again. They're like, something is up. And so, yes, they say, you know what? Let's, let's stop the world's gas crisis. Because this may have been a, a, thing, a theme at the sure. time, too, of, of the country, is that there was a gas crisis. And so let's power everything by music. And so when they do that, who, who is that going to directly affect? If if you if you take away the, the need, that's right the people who just took over the refinery, I was going to say Dubai the people who are in Dubai <laughs> Dubai, <laughs> Dubai Dubai nothing, <laughs> um, the mobster he has a son and they challenge the kids to a race yeah and I, this is, I don't understand how this came like all of a sudden they're like oh yeah you know our, our gas powered car is faster than your music powered car and they're like oh yeah well let's race let's you know where blah 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 is yeah let's meet there okay boom we're right there oh okay <laughs> there's a helicopter with news there's people fans there's a flag guy i mean everybody's there all of a sudden yeah they, they i think they literally went from talking trash in the street it's like go over to the part the raceway mm-hmm. and there's already built-in fans and camera crews and everything waiting for them and um and, and cut to grandpa he's like hey don't worry about the kids racing i rigged the car so it wouldn't go too fast right but then the kids get out their instruments Play fast. Bada bing, bada boom. They win the race. They revolutionize this country by using music energy vehicles uh, everywhere and convert uh, now the mobsters uh, business is is in the pooper. Yeah, I mean, uh, now they become famous. They're like on TV and stuff yeah. talking about this. Yeah. And, and the mobsters are like watching the TV going, I don't like how this looks. You need to take care of it. <laughs> Take care of these guys. Take care of them. Take them out. They say, go, he says, the mobster says to his cronies, hey, go steal this invention and destroy it. But then they get scared off by a huge dragon. Uh, no. No? No. The first time the mobsters go over to try to steal it, the kids, for some reason, know that these are <laughs> bad guys. And they put masks on their – and they just scare these mobsters with – Little pumpkin masks. Or weren't they dancing down the basement to the yeah, music? Yeah, or yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It scared the mobsters. Wow, kids, you're, you get, you really have to look in the mirror if you're a mobster and say, "Today, I was thwarted by ki- uh, dancing kids in masks." Right. We're you really have, kids, yeah. yeah. You really have to take a look at your career and where it's heading and evaluate yourself. It's it's a tough thing to do. Anyway, so the mobsters go back to the head man. He's like, "No, no, yeah, this isn't going to work. You go, go back and you get it. You know." Yeah. So um, he's like, I got to play him. So the mobsters trick the monsters by inviting them to an imaginary party. Yep. And while they're off trying to go to this party, they pull up with a, a truck that says piano on the side of it, and they steal Spot. Right. Now, yeah. Spot is uh, their pet, quote unquote, dog, but it's actually uh, you know a big dragon. Yes. I think at this point in the movie. And this may have been an, uh, the same thing in the series too. I don't was Spot in the series. Yeah, you you would only see his tail, and like you would never see his face. I it's don't either think. you'd see his tail or just his breathing fire. Right, 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 all over the place. They're taking a page for me out of Aliens, or they're taking a page out of the World Beyond, and they're not going to show you the dragon until the end. But here they don't even show you it at all. I think it's just kind of the running gag of the series. Yeah, that, that was the running gag of the series. And plus, I mean, you, they could they, they, all the money they spent on all the makeup and everything, they couldn't afford to make a fucking yeah. fake dragon. It was terrible. Just, just imagine that big red dog in the books for kids. You know the big red dog books? Right. Yeah. That little girl had a big, humongous, oversized dog that Clifford or something, right? Yeah, Clifford. We're familiar. Yeah, just imagine Clifford... Uh, with a dragon tail and breathe fire. And you never see his face. Right. Same thing. Um, I'd read that book every day. You, is, were you a big Clifford fan? No, I wasn't, but I would read it. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't care for it. I didn't care It was the it. only book you had. Yeah. So you had, you had to make hay while the sun was shining? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's smart. That's a good strategy. Yeah. You, it, you have to keep up your reading or you'll lose it. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. That's right? true. The kids rescue the dragon. They go and they, he's like on the end of a pier or something, and they pull up with a tugboat and they just drag the whole building he's in away. But wait, the tugboat runs out of gas, and they're heading straight for 
a waterfall oh, in the boy. middle of a town. <laughs> just, 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 there's Niagara Falls in the middle of this town. Was it gas powered or was it music powered? Because that's when the gangsters got the music powered machine. Then they broke it. At the same time, they were stealing it from Grandpa, weren't they? I thought they already had it and they broke it. And the tugboat wasn't running anymore because there's there no Maybe music. That's what, yeah, that's what it was. And, and then they had it. He, Grandpa was trying to put it, reassemble it with all the pieces, and he didn't know how to reassemble all the pieces back together. He needed some sort of explosion in his face to happen right. to recreate Because he it. accidentally made it in the first place. Yeah. And then they, like, tickle the dragon, or they tell it tell a, joke a joke or something, and it breathes fire, <laughs> seemingly in the direction they don't want to go. Yes. But instead, it's like a, a reversed fire-breathing <laughs> dragon. It's like a vacuum blow. I, don't I, know I, I think it, it had something to do with a tail, too. It's a swoosh of the tail. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it didn't make sense. Um and that's just the beginning of it, get, it getting confusing. It's from here. I don't understand. Maybe this really was an hour at some point, and just so many chunks were. They're just trying to wrap it up at the. I don't know what happened. After yeah. This. After 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 the the waterfall in the middle of the town, I quit taking notes because I fucking got lost. The mobsters smashed the invention, and then somehow the. The uh, the Grundy guy, the Grundy character, the ghost of the her owner of the hearse, he had suspended the the mobster up in the air somehow, and like and it scared him, yeah, like or, sca- yeah, force pushed him or something into the hearse. Very weird. Yeah. I, I mean, almost proof positive that this was heavily edited in some way. Had to have been because uh, it didn't make it wrapped up very quickly, and that was it. Yeah, that was you're, there. You go, mobsters carted off. Grandpa's invention. I don't. Was it in limbo? Was it fixed at the end or not? Probably not. I, I don't. I don't know. Well, they got it working again because uh, when they had it all assembled together, he's like, "I don't know what the last parts were." Then, uh, what's his name? The dude, Frankenstein guy. What's Herman. Herman. Yeah. Herman. That's it. He got electrocuted and was touching the invention at the same time and brought it back. Oh, alive. oh. Good I missed job. that. Good job, Kevin. Thank you. But, yeah, thank you for filling those holes. Um, it, you know, it, even if you hadn't been here to correct us, I wouldn't care. <laughs> I, I have nothing invested in this film. Uh, some of these ones that we've watched have not been bad. And at the end, I'm like, oh, that was very satisfying. This was not satisfying. No. I, well, we'll didn't, get... I didn't care what yeah. happened at the end. Yeah. It didn't matter. Ooh, boy. I, I couldn't keep track of what was going on. It was, like you said, it was, it was edited crazy. Some would, some would say a lot of turbulence. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. Okay. The show didn't last. We know it didn't last. It was, it was a one-off thing for a Saturday morning sometime for the kiddies to watch. It didn't work out, for me, very obvious reasons. But now I'm going to turn to you guys. Kevin, why don't you think this show worked? Oh, man. Well, it could have been multiple reasons. And uh, Let's count them down from one. Okay. Well, if they didn't edit it so hard... Yeah. I think in the original airing, it probably was about an hour. I don't think so. No, okay. <laughs> I was there. I saw it. You were, you were a negative 17. You broke a record by being so negative. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Any other reasons you think it might? Uh, I mean, they were just... I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, really. Honestly. Is I should probably good? pass it to the next person. <laughs> I, I, I'll just that would be talking. me. I am the next person. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh <laughs> There's a lot of movement for that drink. But uh, anyway, uh, for me, again, the editing, it was edited so much that uh, you couldn't keep track of what was going on. Uh, story didn't make sense. And again, uh, 10 years ago, people watched The Monsters. Yeah. But I mean, 10 years prior to this coming out, they watched the Too Monsters. little, too late, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. Nobody, you know, the kids were on to bigger and better things already. Um, you were trying to bring something back for kids. But those kids that watched it are now... They're past that. Yeah, they're they past... They don't watch cartoons anymore. It's not... Ugh. It's not like now where, you know, 20, 40-year-old guys watch cartoons. <laughs> but, and, I, and I also was very unpleased with the animation, the, the drawings. It was just... I, I know there was only so much technology at the time, but I just... I don't like those kind of... That art. I, I You know, I watch um, modern-day uh, cartoon movies, and a lot of it's computer-animated. So I really give like drawn cartoons. I usually give them a bit of a pass because I like to see that. I like to see the drawn, even if it's even if it's crappy. Like I know, mo- I think they can do a a show in so- of South Park in a few days because of all the computer technology. Right. But hand drawn stuff to me, 
I, I love it. I yeah. love the, I love the craft of it. I love the look of it. I didn't mind the visuals of it. Obviously, there's an audio problem when it transferred to YouTube or however. But um, to me, laugh track, just awful. Yeah. Um, it may have been a nice companion piece to the prime time version of the show at the time. Maybe it could have been a more um, funny or outlandish or ridiculous version of that at the time because you know you get the it's a prime time show. So maybe people watch in the evening, but then Saturday mornings, maybe kids can enjoy a, a sillier version. Sure. Or again, uh, you can less, do anything less with cartoons. Less complicated storyline. Yeah, yeah. And you can do anything. You can take the monsters to space if you want to. You right. can do anything you want with <laughs> cartoons for kids. Um, and, and you can do things that do not translate to live action sure. with cartoons. But I think you need to, you, you need to simplify it. You're, sure. You're doing a cartoon in 20-some minutes. Yeah. Um, don't try to fit so much in to it. Just have something going on in the house. Yeah. That's what sitcoms do. You know, you don't see them go into the racetrack and then go into the school and then go into the airport. You just see them fucking hanging out in the living room. Yep. Once in a while, they go in the kitchen. Um, laugh tracks on cartoons, unless it's, like, done over the top, ironically, like, purposefully bad, as, as, as it, like, you know, being silly and, and, and ironic. Um, those are the worst. I hate those. Um just get rid of the life tracks. To me, that that's how I. That's the first thing I would do to improve it. That bothers me so much. <laughs> was there any uh, actually TV series that actually did the over the top laughing? Culture? I'm not going to mention one, but there's one coming up that we're going to do in the 1980s that did it on purpose, and it was it was funny as a result. And we'll definitely mention it when the time comes. So there there are there's at least one example I can think of. And, you know, just about any Tim and Eric weird thing that they do, sometimes they'll do like a little five-minute thing where it's the throw and laugh tracks where it's sure. <laughs> purposefully ridiculous and, and really very funny. <laughs> um, where would we like to see this go if it had survived? In yeah, the garbage. And, <laughs> you don't no. – nothing can salvage this. No, nothing. Okay. Kevin? I wish I could see it go beyond the stars. Go beyond, oh, okay. Maybe to a different galaxy, so I won't have to see it again. So maybe like a uh, Guardian of the Galaxy's Monsters crossover? Yeah, they could just take it and just probably throw it into a different sun so it doesn't damage our Throw it somehow. to the sun? Yeah, not our sun. A, a specifically different sun. So okay. it doesn't... Because I, I have a feeling that it wouldn't disintegrate. It would just go right through the sun and destroy it. Sure. Wow. Itself. So wow. like, you know, have River Phoenix take it and fly up to the sun. Not our sun. Go around our sun and go to the next sun on yeah, our left. Yeah, the Phoenix of Rivers, yes. If it survived, I would say get crazy with it, bring in over-the-top characters and stories. You said uh, dumb it down. I almost say make slightly smarter jokes. Cut the cheesy crap out because kids are a little bit smarter than what they think. And because uh, the kids know the difference between I, I guess I mean dumb it down in regards to the like the verbiage and stuff. I meant dumb it down in regards to the storyline. Okay. That's what I meant. Just okay. keep, it, keep it simple, stupid, for all you I drunks agree. out there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Let, let's, uh, if you let's, have a problem with alcohol, feel free to email me, and I will help you and get you through the day. One day at a time. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. I don't think a lot of people know about this. I had trouble finding reviews for this show. Huh. IMDb says uh, 6.4, nope. which, is, which is high to me. This is really bad. Uh, nothing in Rotten Tomatoes. No surprise there. Uh, I couldn't find any critic reviews. Uh, I did see someone that says I rate it, a viewer review, says I rate it a B-. minus. If you're a Monsters collector, this is a perfect addition to your collection. Um, <laughs> this, this horrible audio, horrible. Yeah. Especially the edit down version. Right, yeah. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah that's, the real, that's the real gold mine right there. That's going to be worth thousands of cents. <laughs> What makes this cartoon enjoyable to watch is knowing that it has only been on TV once for a very long time ago, and that is very rare. For an unknown reason, Marilyn Munster uh, does not appear in this. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions. What, what would this person possibly be able to tell hey, us? Hey, is the email address there? Um, please keep that out. Please, I, no, seriously. Should I, keep say it? That out. should I say it? No, just keep it out. We're gonna... We should email that person mm-hmm. with some questions. I will mention that this is... Um, she was in it, but she didn't really say much, but she was in it. They gave it a B minus, but a four out of ten. To me, that's less than fifty percent, which is right. easily an F. Um, the, okay, Th- this person is from Des Moines, Iowa, and it was written before nine eleven. So I would love to see pre and post nine eleven reviews of this. Sure, I, 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 we're gonna we're gonna email them and just we should seriously. Let's say let's uh, we got some questions for you. Um, 
So I hope their Yahoo account is still open. Uh, I don't know. I don't like this. And I don't feel like there were enough reviews out there to back my, my claim. But we're going to give our own reviews right now. Let's take this in for a landing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11.11 and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. Kevin, could you sit, sit down? Just wait until we get, wait till we land. I was trying to show you some moves. You wicked dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> One to seven. One is crap. Seven is the best thing you've ever seen. Kevin, how do you rate the mini monsters? Well, with all the episodes of this I've seen, I would give it a a solid uh, faded two stars. You, you say faded two? Faded two stars. Okay. Not solid faded. Okay. So a, a faded two stars, which, which wouldn't you just give a whole filled in one star? I, I don't want to like crap on it, so I just want to feel like it's more special than okay. usual. But all right, so that's a fake Cochrane, which is you know not one of our favorite characters on Wings. No, uh, and, and thus that's why she's a number. That's why she's two. Blake, I I hate that that I have to do this um, because I've been doing it frequently. Yeah, um, but. It's getting a big, a big biggins. Wow, a big biggins. This, that's the worst score. You know, that's the worst score you can give. I this. would give it no. Uh, I I would give it a zero. But like you said, it's it's rare. You know what I mean? Like no other stupid people have sat and through and watched this. So I'm like I'm I'm giving myself a one. Just you know what I mean? Like I'm oh, okay. I, I would give it a zero, but I'm giving it a one just because I sat through it. Now, were you were you a big fan of the television show Wings? I, l- I loved Wings. You know all the characters. Yeah. Obviously, there are more than seven characters on the show. We have this, the main seven listed here sure. as far as our rating system. If there was something below a Roy Biggins, who would you say that character would be? Um, in one episode, um, I have a, I have something in mind too. If you if you if we connect on the, who this is, I'm gonna blow my okay. mind's gonna be blown. Uh, the sister came to visit one time. Okay. Helen Hunt's sister came to visit, and I thought she Helen was... Chappell? Helen Chapel. Helen uh, Chapel. That was not who I was thinking. What were you thinking? Um, do you remember... Gilbert Godfrey was on the show a couple times. Wow. And, and he was, um, I think, like the, the son or the grandson or the nephew of this really old guy. And he was like this really annoying old guy. He would talk like this. And, oh. You know, Please take me to Las Cruces, New Mexico. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I know the character you're talking about. I now. can't remember the name. I'm not going to look it up. I don't right. give a shit. Uh, but that is to me. He's the one. The, him and the Godfrey, the combo. Right. That's your. That's your zero. So, uh, but the sister was she a, a real bitch or what was it? You know. Just, okay. I, I made it up. I don't remember. Oh, okay. I, I got. I got to pull the. I got to pull this card on you. This punk card. Do you even like wings? I, no, I do like wings, <laughs> but it's been a long time since I watched it. But I did. Okay. I did watch a lot of them. You know, I have trouble with names. I don't remember people's names and faces and just basic <laughs> speech patterns. Right. But I, I haven't watched wings in a long time. But yeah, I hear you. But I, I, I have a premise of it and everything. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot for making me a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> You got your bridge in. You look great. Big, <laughs> big biggins for me. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, that's about it. We, we. That's it. I, I think you didn't rate it. Oh, oh, me. I'm sorry. You're right. I, I actually I agree with Kevin on this one. Um, I, I like I, number it's two. Your brothers. <laughs> we talked about this the whole way over. He just gave it a two. I gave it a fade it two. So there's a little ah, bit of difference. Good call. Always got to be the little brother doesn't want to be outshined by the big brother. I like that it's a cartoon. Oh, it was lower shined. To me, no, you, you outshined him by coming up with your own. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've I'm created your own. Fucking help you, you little jack. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to lower myself now. Don't don't lower yourself <laughs> to his standards. I like that it's a cartoon. I like that it's only 22 minutes long. Um, I, to me, the gold standard for garbage, it, and I didn't even see it, was the tribe because it just sound like endless walking and just <laughs> nothing on the landscapes. Uh, to me, in my mind, I judge almost everything against that. So I cannot give. The Mini Monsters, as bad as it was, I cannot give it a one. I give it a two, which is not a good score. That's no, not a good no, score. Sorry, I wouldn't want a two. So we got a one, we got a one, a faded two, and a two. To me, that adds up to a bunch of garbage. This show sucks. Don't watch it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, we're, we're going to put the link up in the show notes, but don't fucking click on it. You know what? I should make it lavender. Yeah, make a lavender. <laughs> make the lavender link for sure. 
Um, and you know what? We're, that's, that's it for this episode, but we're not done. We got more for you. Uh, join us next time when we watch the pilot episode of Mason. Here is a little something to wet your whistle. When you know he's sad, put your arms around I'm sorry that audio was bad, but you know what? I hope that bad audio covered up the creepy spookiness. You have to go watch this trailer. This is going to be a blue link. Um, you have to go watch this because it's creepy. The little kid is creepy. I don't even know what the show is about, but it's creepy. It's it's it it scares me. It's I Eli was in the room. I said you got to leave the room. Leave the room. Yeah. Um. I do all the research for the show. I stumbled across this. What's that? Humble brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a real labor of love. Um, I came across this, and it is very bizarre. This is the last show that we're doing for the 1970s before we move on to the 80s. It is a very bizarre-looking show. It's a sitcom based around a tiny child um, who is he's, – he's a little ginger, redhead, freckle kid. I, he, I think he has some sort of – physical retardation about him sure um his face is odd he's still alive to this day his name is mason reese if you want to find this click on the blue link that uh blake mentioned it will be on our show notes or just go to youtube and you can uh search mason reese pilot that's reese r-e-e-s-e um very weird this is it is uh, that song that we just heard the opening that's the opening credits for the show the opening intro it seems like a very sweet song it seems to me i don't know it's kind of like I don't mind that song, but when I when I see the visuals with it, when I know what I'm getting into, because I haven't seen the whole thing yet, I watched the first few minutes. It is very bizarre. There's also um, I saw there when when I was clicked on this to record, pull the audio for this this trip. That's what executive producers say. They pull the audio. Um, I'm the executive producer of the show. I don't know. If you, I don't know. You, Did well, you know? Are you not bowing? Bow bow to him. He's the he's the uh, executive producer. <laughs> but. Uh, there also, like on the side, you know, YouTube has all the little, you know, other things that yeah. you know, so you can go into the endless uh, black hole. Right. There's an interview with him, and he's crying. I so did not see that. We might have to add that to the show notes for next week too. I, I'm gonna have to watch it. It's creepy. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is again, obviously from the 70s. Since we're wrapping up the 70s, how how old was he in that interview? Was he young? Oh, it was. Yeah, he was about the same age. <sighs> This this kid was like a flash in the pan. He had a few little things in the seventies, and he came back a couple of years ago. And I don't know if it was another unsold pilot that maybe we can wrap around and watch. But he had a, another show on where he was the star of it as as a grown man, probably into his forties by now. And he's not much taller than he was then, but he's I, I don't know. Uh, the, I don't know what's going it, on. It was probably a reboot of The Mask. <laughs> not with Jim Carrey. Oh, not smoking. You're talking about Eric Stoltz and uh, our favorite Sam Elliott from Evil Knievel. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Did you ever watch that movie? It's a creepy. I movie. watched it. The second one? No, I haven't seen it. Not the no, not the mask with not... Jim Carrey. It's another one about a, a deformed child in no? a biker gang. In a biker gang, and, 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 and Cher looking and pretty good. Slutty Cher mom. Oh, she looked good. I'd like to see that. <laughs> oh, oh, you are a big Cher fan. <laughs> you. That was creepy. He's like, I like to see that. Is it is it fair to say, Kevin, that uh, what's that what's that song called? Believe. Yes. Is it, <laughs> is it fair to say that Believe by Cher, all joking a salad, is your favorite song? It's in the. It's in, I would say it's in my top one once. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you can you sing any of it? I can uh, lip sing it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't translate to audio very well. Yeah. Um, 
It, I really, seriously, that you do, you bring up that song from time to time as a joke, but you really do love that song by Cher, don't you? Well, I heard it so many times when I was a kid. That's, it kind of just what makes you love it. I mean, just because the, the the hearing it so many times, or is there actually a meaning to the song? I, I have no idea. I, I would imagine it was probably just like maybe a good time in my life. <laughs> your, hearing your, that song, your with, niece, my daughter, nine years old. I'm gonna say, believe by Cher came out around ninety nine ish. That was it. Probably affects you in some way because you were a child when that song came out. Yes. Would you say that this audio we're about ready to hear is going to affect you in any way? I'll probably start tearing up a little bit. This is gonna. Are we gonna have an intro violation? Oh yeah, it's it's heavy intro violation. <laughs> Oh my god, he is tearing up. I've never seen a man's glasses fog <laughs> up indoors after being indoors for a while. <laughs> this is heavily T-pained it is. voice. <laughs> sounds like a robot. Can- well, that's when she... This was like one of her comeback songs. Oh yeah, oh, yeah definitely. And she's like, well, I can't sing anymore, and everybody's listening to techno. Let's put those two things together. Well, it was uh, Daft Punk pretty... That was Daft taken Punk, off, I think we're, we're starting to have hits in the oh. mid to late 90s. Okay. So... Because um, that's what kind of reminded me of. Well, your, European music was very electronic in, in the 90s, and that's where Daft Punk started. And yeah, maybe that bled over to that a little bit, but I think Blake's absolutely right. She was aging. I think right now, as we sit here today, Cher is probably 115. Sure, definitely. So, so at this if time... I, if I'm 41, she's 117. Right, and if... If May- if the show Mason came out in the seventies, then she was probably positive sixty at that point, sure. right? Mm-hmm. Sure. If we're just doing our math, right? So you're probably str- you're probably right on. She was trying to put a nice little exclamation point on her career, but she needed the help of some robots to do it. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, all that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> check out check out Mason Reese pilot. Uh, the show's just called Mason. Um, if you have any questions about that, if you have any questions about our ages, how our ages compare to the shows we watch, um, if you have questions about my hairline. Um, uh, by belt size, whatever it is, get a hold of us at couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. And that is your first place to go to if you want to start, um, get into the system, the frequent flyer mile system. Get from As soon as you email us, boom, you are instantly going to start getting some frequent flyer Rack up um, points. points. With each with each passing episode, yeah. you're going to get more and more. Um, we had Matt on last week. He had, he was, he, he had cashed in his, and he's Aviator glasses signed by yourself yeah. and me? No, he was. I, I, I appreciate it, but would I, I? If I've got enough points, I want to be on the show. And he was. He looked like little orphan Oliver. From, remember, you know Oliver. Yeah. He had all his little frequent flyer points in his hand. His eyes got real big and watery. He looked up at us. He held his points out. He knocked on the door and said, "I've, I've, I've saved all my frequent flyer points." And you know what? We said, "Get, get on in here. Yep, You've earned it, buddy. You've earned a seat well, in the captain's chair." We said, "Get in here after you watch this movie." Yeah, watch this garbage first. Right. How did he get here? Did he like run and swim and? No, we we picked him up in a, a limousine. Oh, did you? We picked him up in a limousine. Yeah. Um, you would you would think that he triathlon his way here. He did not. He, right. We picked, we sent the uh, FCF limousine to pick him up. First okay. class all the way for this. Yeah, one. and he's like, can my can my wife and my dog and my baby come? No, no, absolutely, absolutely no, not. No, we, absolutely no. not. Um, We're not about all that. Uh, go to fcfnetwork.com. Definitely. This network is in full full steam ahead. We've got six shows on it. We are eyeballing seven and eight right now. We've got our scouts out there uh, combing the countryside. Who's going to be next? Who's coming on? Who's going? Who who wants to be a part of this rocket ship to the moon? Well, I, an announcement. By the time this comes out, Low Blow Podcast. Oh, we can go ahead and announce of, it. Low Blow Podcast out of Chicago. Uh, they are officially members of FCF Network. And then, actually, one of the members is, is someone you've interviewed before, too. Is that right? Have you no, uh, okay. no, not interview him. But I, I met him through when he was when he was part of a band. Okay, yeah, the Blind Staggers. The Blind Staggers, so. a great roots uh, music band. Uh, but yes, welcome to Low Blow. I'm so glad that they're part of the family. Check them out. They're very funny. They talk about a lot of. Um, uh, pop culture things. Sure, they're pop culture. They're younger guys, and they don't they don't pull any punches either. They they really are very brash and blunt about the way they feel about sure. things, and uh, a lot of fun. The show's a lot of fun, definitely. So check out Low Blow as well. Go to fcfnetwork.com. Check out all of our shows. Um, uh, any, any last words? Yeah, um, I'm and I'm sorry. I, I apologize, um, but it is very important that you guys subscribe to our shows yeah. on iTunes. 
Um, it's very important that you give us rating, you know, rate us and leave a review. Uh, it doesn't take very much time. Every review helps. Every subscription helps us to get on these crazy lists from it's iTunes. All, it's all free. Right. All of our shows are free. We don't ask for money. You can donate if you want, and absolutely that will help the show. But what we would probably ask even more so is that you do subscribe to the show. You do leave us a, a, a review. You do rate us. Um, sure, sure. It all you, helps. Yeah. Uh, like the pages. Each show has a page on Facebook, yeah. FCF. But you know, if you see a link with an episode, please share it. Don't just like it. Sh- like it is great, but share it as well because we don't have – Thousands and thousands of dollars for advertising, you know. And there's twelve thousand podcasts in the world, and we're just trying to get spread. You know, if you know yeah. somebody that likes this kind of stuff, yeah. I mean, even if we did have thousands of dollars, and, and, and you really put the word out there, nothing is better than word of mouth. And if you can help us with that, then that's we couldn't pay for that. We couldn't buy enough advertisement to get that word of mouth. And again, so, frequent flyer points. Frequent flyer points. You're going to want to rack those up. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, do you have anything final you want to say? Is there any other way to get these uh, frequent fire points? You're talking about sexual acts. First of all, that's uh, homosexual incest between you and I. So I will say no. But okay. no, it's, Blake? It's, not, it's not. It's not incest with me. Okay. So yes, there are other ways that you can earn frequent flyer miles. That's the short answer. The second, the long answer, I think we could take offline. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for sitting in. I'm sorry you had to watch that crap show. Uh-huh. Uh, it was a lot of fun to have you on. Well, I, I enjoyed it. It was very fun, except for uh, all of it. Except for <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So not only the show, but being on the couch wow. this was not enjoyable. No, that was fun. Oh. It was the show part. It wasn't. Fun. Okay, I got you. Um, thank you very much, Jason, for for piloting this ship to where oh, it yeah. needed to be. That's fine. That's great. I'm, I have a great time doing it. It's a real joy. Um, unfortunately, the pilot was very rough, but it's always smooth sailing on couch pilots. Thanks, everybody. We will see you next time. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.